Olympics 2016, how PV signed who stunned Nozomi Akahara with a badminton blitzkrieg. Bearer of a billion Indian hopes for a second medal at the Rio Olympics 2016, Shuttler Pusarla Venkata signed who produced one of the finest and most passionate performances of her career, to pummel Japan's Nozomi Akahara into submission in the women's singles semi-final on Thursday. The brilliant 51-minute victory by a 21-19, 21-10 scoreline over the reigning All-England champion made the 21-year-old signed who the first player from India to earn the right to contest an Olympic badminton final, and firmly eclipsed the bronze medal-winning display by compatriot Sana Nahal at the 2012 London Games. After jousting on even terms with Akahara for about one and a half games, the gloves were off for signed who at 10 all in the second game. She unleashed a barrage of attacking strokes and grabbed 11 straight points in a seven-minute blitzkrieg that left her diminutive rival stunned, shocked and disoriented. Akahara's plans of taking the match the full distance lay in tatters. On Friday evening, signed who will spar with Spanish two-time world champion Carolina Marin for the coveted gold medal. Marin looked in commanding form as she dislodged defending champion Li Zuarui of China from the Olympic throne, with a dominating 21-14, 21-16 triumph. The left-handed Spaniard was in command for virtually the entire match with an impressive display of speed, power and sparkling stroke play, and even made up a 11-15 deficit in the second stanza with a string of six points. She did have an unwarranted stroke of luck at 17-16 when her 25-year-old opponent landed awkwardly on her left knee while playing a twisting airborne overhead shot, and went over on her back with a suspected ligament tear. Following a prolonged medical timeout, in which Lee got her knee strapped and insisted on continuing, much to the displeasure of her coach, former world champion, Chen Jin, the Chinese girl simply limped around the court without much hope of getting into a rally and let Marin go through the formality of taking the remaining three points for victory. But by staying on the court till the bitter end, Lee was giving herself a chance of returning for the bronze medal playoff on Friday, had she retired before the completion of her match against Marin, her name would have been scratched off the event. Even so, her chances of taking the court against Takahara on Friday appear remote with a damaged left knee. Signed who entered the court on Thursday with the full knowledge that she could not afford to get into a prolonged, no-holds-barred battle with one of the fittest and steadiest defensive players on the badminton circuit, one who possessed exemplary speed and footwork. While winning the 2015 season-ending Super Series final in Dubai last December, Akahara had beaten the best in the world, including Sana Nahal and Carolina Moran. She followed it up with the prestigious All-England title in March this year. And she had won both by engaging her opponents in the most excruciatingly long and energy-sapping rallies she could conjure up. Ergo, signed who came up with a game plan completely different from the one she had used against China's 2011 world champion Wang Yan in the quarterfinal. Instead of consistently playing lengthy rallies, as she did against Yue, the Indian gave the 21-year-old Akahara no rhythm at all, punctuating short, sharp rallies with some long ones where the players covered every corner of the court in their attempt to catch the opponent out of position. Akahara did depart from her normal procedure by playing aggressively in the initial reaches of the opening game, but some resolute defending allowed Sindhu to move out into an initial 7-4 lead, which she enlarged to 11-6 at the breather. The length the Indian used her height where she had a 9-inch advantage over the 5-1-inch Akahara, and reached to attack her opponent's backhand and finish off the returns with steep smashes to untenanted areas. After the interval, the pint-sized Japanese began to claw her way back, and reduced the margin to 10-12, and then to 13-15 and 15-17. Signed whose familiar end-of-game nerves duly kicked in, and Akahara came within striking distance at 17-18 and then 1920. But the Hydra body lass kept her composure, and made sure that she had the first game in her satchel. After an initial 3-0 breakout in the second stanza, Sindhu was reeled back by some robust retrieving by the Japanese girl, and thereafter, barely a point separated the two antagonists until the midway mark. The rallies were very even and absorbing, 
but one could tell that the Indian was tiring. Sindhu held away for thin advantage at 11.10 when the players went into the lemon break. The lead could have been a bit more substantial, had the Indian not missed two absolute sitters from midcourt, in her haste to finish the points by the short route. No doubt the errors occurred as a result of mistiming the kills since she was onto the shuttle a microsecond late. The general expectation at that juncture of the match was that Akaharo would step up a gear and make sign to play longer rallies, and exploit the fact that the Indian looked more than a little winded at that stage. But to the utter consternation of the sizable Japanese contingent in the crowd, quite the reverse took place. As coach Pulala Gopachand later observed, that breather at 11.10 in the second game marked a watershed moment in the match. I was sure that one of the two players would crack under the immense pressure at that point, and I was hoping it wouldn't be signed to. When she got a couple of quick points upon resumption, she simply piled on the pressure, and it was the Japanese girl who could not keep pace. Having got her second win during the interval, signed who suddenly upped the ante, and played two points at blinding pace. Akahara was completely thrown by the tactic, and became just a little tentative and prone to errors. Sitting on a 13-10 lead, signed who went for broke, the adrenaline pumping furiously in her system, and the accurate, aggressive strokes flowing with great vigor and elan. There was even a whiplash backhand smash as she rushed the net behind an overhead half smash. As point after point got added to signed who's kitty, her opponent's resolve broke completely. As the Hydra body powered to 18-10, her supporters hoped against hope her end-of-game nerves wouldn't manifest in a typical clutch of unforced errors. But Sindhu would have none of it today. Confidence continued to drip off each of her closing strokes, including the late deceptive drop at the net with a turn of the wrist that caught Akaharo backpedaling in anticipation of a push to the body. And when, at match point, the Indian followed up a fierce hit into her rival's body with a thunderous follow-up smash that brooked no response, she had taken the final 11 points of the match in an unbroken reel. Pusar Levenkata signed who has just claimed a quartet of notable scalps in Michelle Lee, Taitsu Ying, Wang Yan and Nozomi Akahara. Now only Carolina Marin stands between her and the ultimate prize at these Olympics. Mm -hmm.